Hi guys, I went to Egypt recently, my 35th country so far. A lot of people have been asking me for a detailed itinerary, so I'm going to attempt a vlog. Even despite traveling so much, I've never done something like this before because I never shoot videos or too many photos on my trips. So hopefully you guys will stay till the end and enjoy this video because it's taken me a lot of work. So I flew from Bangalore to Cairo with a stopover in Jeddah on Saudi Airlines. And my trip started off on a bit of a sour note because the airline misplaced my luggage at the Jeddah airport and I had to wait 4 hours at Cairo airport waiting for my luggage. But the excitement of being in Africa for the first time made it bearable. After the longest night trying to find my hotel and waiting for my luggage, this was a view I woke up to. So I chose to stay in Giza instead of Cairo to get to spend the whole day in the shadows of a wonder of the world. Now there are various theories on why the pyramids was constructed but they are largely believed to be tombs for the ancient pharaohs or the Egyptian kings. Now guys as you know Egypt is all about its history which is long layered and very complex so in this video I'm not going to delve too deep into the history of each place instead I'm just going to talk about my experiences. The pyramids are gorgeous at sunset and after I exited the compound, I decided to hang out with the people I met in my hostel and to a local ahava or a cafe to get some tea, which is the favourite pastime of all the Egyptians. It's today that I discovered this dish called koshari, which as a vegetarian I would go on to eat for the rest of my time in Egypt. At night, I attended the light and sound show from the terrace of my hotel. If you are into colourful laser projections on ancient monuments, you may enjoy it. But I had a bit of a pyramid fatigue by the end of it. So this impromptu gig by the hotel owners was very welcome as were the unlimited cups of tea on a chilly December night. lots to offer beyond the pyramids so off I went for my next destination Aswan which is at the far end of Egypt that borders Sudan. I had an overnight train to Aswan which took almost 14 hours. I reached Aswan the next day and just spent my whole time in the uh, in the hostel and because we had to catch this 5 a.m. bus to go to Abu Simbel temple which is 250 kilometers away and this entire journey all you'll have on either side of you is the majestic Sahara desert for four hours. Hi guys, so I'm at Abu Simbel right now. In a remarkable feat of engineering, the entire Abu Simbel temple complex was dismantled and rebuilt on a higher hill to prevent it from getting washed out in the Egyptian floods and today it stands by Lake Nasser. The massive temple is said to have been built by King Ramses II and all the four statues are the man himself. The temple next door is dedicated to his wife Nefertari and other queens. Both temples have large statues, hieroglyphics, friezes and inscriptions that have survived 4000 years of existence. When in Aswan, you have to take a ride to the colourful Nubian village, a touristy little riverside Bob Marley inspired village inhabited by Sudanese immigrants. You can spend a couple of hours here shopping for Nubian art, spices, taking some pictures, getting a meal with the Nile River view, riding a camel or visiting a household and their pet crocodile. Now, this was one of my favourite things I did in Egypt. This was a felucca or a boat ride on River Nile, which as you know is the longest river in the world. And uh, this was a two hour ride, you get tea, we had a lunch on this boat and we just saw the sun go down and the ebbs and flows of River Nile and it's just beautiful. I think this is something that you have to do when in Egypt. You can do it either in Aswan or Luxor or even in Cairo. After this, I hung out with the people I met in my hostel and called it a night because next morning I had the train to Luxor, a three hour train ride and Luxor is where a lot of history awaits. In Luxor, I started my day with the majestic temples of Karnak which are famous for their hypostyle hall which has 134 columns that are as high as 100 feet each. That's 10 floors. I have never been anywhere like this. This is just... 
the most salient feature of these columns is that even though they go back almost 5000 years you can still see the colors of the inscriptions and the hieroglyphics they were done in I basically spend the next two hours getting lost in the temples, the ruins, the colossal statues, the unfinished obelisk, and all the history that Karnak Temple presented. And I'd like the Peloka experience so much that I ended up doing it again in Luxor today. This time, the boat was all to myself. A little note, you guys. Egypt is notorious for some very aggressive selling. They request you, they plead you, and they hound you everywhere for souvenirs, cab rides, tour guides, you name it. But they're all mostly harmless. They're just trying hard to make ends meet, especially in the low season. So buy what you can afford and support the local economy. Egyptians are some of the friendliest and most helpful people I've met, and I don't mind some hawking. And that's the beautiful Luxor temple. I didn't pay to go inside because you can see pretty much everything from outside and it's beautiful. Luxor in the evenings is one of the most beautiful places to be. The sky is a beautiful shade of pink and purple. The local Egyptians come out with their families and friends and the chariots are going back home and the road is just beautiful. The next day I went to Valley of Kings, a glorious necropolis located on the west bank of the Nile. Can you believe it that under all these hills and sand lies the tombs of as many as 60 Egyptian royalty members? The famous Tutankhamun tomb was excavated as recently as 1922 and excavations continue to happen till this day. The Egyptians believed in an afterlife so they would bury their mummified dead in these very elaborate and ornate tombs along with all their wealth and creature comforts that they believed they would need to live a beautiful afterlife. The drawings describe the passage of the dead into the afterlife and are very well preserved in some of the tombs. After that, we went to this handicraft center to check out some papyrus, alabaster and local Egyptian art and I ended up buying some and I think everyone should. Um, and now we are at one of my favorite temples in all of Valley of Kings. This is called the Heart Shaped Suit Temple and I hope I got the pronunciation right and it's dedicated to the only female pharaoh in Egypt. And that's the ruins of the giant statues of Menmen at the entrance of Valley of Kings. Time to conclude the amazing Luxor trip with some local goodies at Sofra. After which, I headed off to Alexandria again on an overnight train. And the best part about this train was this bar which I didn't know about and I spent all my time scandalizing the men here by being the only woman. I only had a few hours to explore Alexandria so I took a shared taxi and reached the citadel which was closed. So I just explored the Cornish on foot and just walked along the sea. Now compared to the ancient tombs and monuments and temples of Luxor, Aswan and Cairo, Alexandria is a fairly cosmopolitan and large city much like Mumbai in India. With a few hours to kill, I checked out the magnificent Bibliotheca Alexandrina, a modern structure in sharp contrast to Egypt's antiquity. It's believed to be the modern day reincarnation of the ancient famed Alexandria Library which was destroyed by Julius Caesar in 48 BC. This library has a million books and a lot of art and this statue of Gandhi was gifted by India to the library. I had a three hour train back to Cairo to catch again so I came back and I slept in the train and then I checked into my hotel at midnight and had a very good sleep and prepared to spend my last two days in Egypt by exploring the Islamic side of Cairo which is a lot of mosques, bazaars and I happened to go up on one of the mos mosques and see the whole Cairo skyline from up there it was beautiful. And after the whole day of exploring Islamic Cairo on foot, I had to get myself a break. So I decided to check out the famous Khal Al-Khel Khalidi market, which is one of the biggest local markets in Egypt, which sells everything from spices to handicrafts to souvenirs to beautiful lamp. My next day was going to be all piecing together the bits of history I caught in the last 8 days at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Now guys, this is no ordinary museum. It's 3 levels of full of history packed with hundreds of statues, tombs, antiquities, curios, masks and here's where you find the 
famous mask of Tutankhamun. Next stop, mummies. Yay! <laughs> right from stuffed animals to stuffed human beings. Egyptian museum has it all. And yes, these are real mummies of kings who died over 5,000 years ago, you guys. Make sure you spend at least 4 hours at the Egyptian museum to get the most out of it. I spent my last day in Egypt doing what the Egyptians do best, which is get a cup of coffee by the roadside and watch the world go by. After that, I met a friend uh, and then we hung out at a spot locals frequent and watched a football game. The last thing I did before leaving Egypt was attend this mesmerizing performance by a Sufi group called El Tanura, which is somewhere between your white clad dervishes and full on Cirque du Soleil. And with that, my 10 day trip to Egypt came to an end and within a few hours, I was on a flight back to India and even though I've been back for a few months now, I still think about Egypt with nothing but good memories in my heart and I would suggest to everybody to visit Egypt at least once in your life.